The program you're about to see is produced in partnership with the financial support of people like you. Join the worldwide In The Life Media family who produce change through the gift of membership. Click on Donate Now at itlmedia.org or text ITLM to 69866 today. Like it or not, true or not, I have been welcomed to the world of living as an HIV positive person. The accusation in the, in the police report was that I had not disclosed my HIV status prior to conducting this relationship. The sentence associated with this could be as much as 30 years in prison. More than 30 states have statutes criminalizing the exposure or transmission of HIV. This patchwork of legislation varies state to state, both in terms of punishment and what behaviors are criminalized. In the 90s, the Ryan White Care Act made it necessary for states to certify that they had some sort of legal mechanism to address intentional exposure with HIV. About half the states said, you know, we have assault statutes, we have public health statutes, we're fine. Um, and then about half the states went out and created a patchwork of crazy legislation. Very few of them limited it to intentional transmission or exposure. Instead, what they did was created far more broad laws that said if anybody didn't disclose that they had HIV and had sex with someone, or some variation of what they call sex, then it would be against the law. People call them HIV transmission statutes. They're not about transmission. Almost all the prosecutions are about failing to disclose. Uh, so if a person with HIV cannot prove that he or she disclosed to a partner, uh, then they're at risk. Darren was accused by a former lover who was not a one night stand, was not a one week stand. This was a relationship that went on for months. Darren's being charged under Florida Statute 384-242, targeting specific individuals who are HIV positive, who are having a sexual relationship with somebody and have not notified that person that they're HIV positive. It doesn't matter whether somebody was exposed. It doesn't matter whether somebody used a condom. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to pass on the virus. It just matters your status and whether or not you had sex and conveyed your status. This is someone I was actually planning on spending the rest of my life with. We were shopping for a multi-million dollar farm. And so you can only imagine the shock of all this. The relationship goes bad. The gentleman tries to reconcile with Darren on up until the last moment. And when Darren finally says, it's over, it's not ever gonna come back together, you know, I need you to leave the house, Within an hour or two, he's down at the sheriff's office filing a police report. I'm in the horse business, but every horse is attached to a few people. So this is a people business. The story on the street is I have AIDS and gave AIDS to this, you know, poor unsuspecting kid. He's not a kid, he's a grown man and has a successful career. I don't have AIDS and he not only doesn't he have AIDS, he's not HIV positive. Any criminal charge is awfully serious. But when you're facing a criminal charge for something that has such a negative stigma, and I'll use Darren as an example, you know, he gets sponsorships pulled. He gets clinics canceled. He may not be asked to appear at this event or that event. When a family member requests of you to distance yourself from their children, that's pretty heavy. And um, it's... Those kind of, again, how do, you, how do you ever come away from that? Those are permanent, permanent things that have happened in your life that you'll never quite have the same relationship with those people. HIV criminalization is a problem in all sorts of ways. They undercut the most fundamental message about sexual health, which is that each of us must be responsible for protecting ourselves. They contribute enormously to stigma, uh, there is nothing that is a more extreme manifestation of stigma 
than when it's enshrined in the law. The stigma and discrimination related to HIV, and in some cases the fear and the myths related to HIV, makes it very difficult sometimes for rational conversations to be had about the risks of transmission and what the evidence actually tells us about the risks of transmission. It's that fear of you as a person, even though you've not done anything to them, you've not affected their life in any other way other than having this disease. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about HIV in Iowa. How it's transmitted, how infectious people are, you know, can you just, can you be in the same room with them? Well, that bike would fit you. This bike is a step-through frame. I moved here because I wanted to live in a smaller city that I could be more of a pedestrian and more of a cyclist. Iowa City seemed like a, a perfect place to be able to do that. I'm from Iowa, and I love Iowa. We have gay marriage, it's a really great place. But unfortunately, Iowa has one of the most repressive criminalization statutes in the country. I could be subject to 25 years in prison. On a night in January 2007, I was riding my bicycle home from my job. The driver of a minivan pulled up behind me so fast that, I mean, I just, I panicked. And then he jerked back into the lane adjacent to mine, the left lane, roared past me, and then jerked back into the lane. I ride up to his car window, probably not a very smart thing to do, and I rapped on his window. It was cold, I was angry, and I wanted to give the guy peace of my mind. The driver gets out of his car with a four-foot-long telescopic windshield scraper and starts slamming the right side of my head at least four times. I'm bleeding. I still have my bicycle between my legs. I still have my backpack. And then he started yelling at me, poking me in the face. And at some point, his finger actually went in my mouth. I just bit down. I thought, I've got to get this person's license number because I'm calling the police. My first mistake. The Iowa City Police Department decided to charge me with the assault. Everyone agrees that the intent to harm someone should be prosecuted, but that is rare. That's not what the bulk of these cases are about. Very few of these cases are about anyone intending to hurt someone else. Uh, about a quarter of the cases are for things like spitting or scratching that don't pose any risk of transmission. Issues such as biting or spitting, which may have been appropriate uh, 30 years ago really are inappropriate now because we realize that HIV is not readily or easily or transmitted via these routes. By a vote of four to three, the county attorneys decided not to charge Donald under Iowa's HIV criminalization statute, which carries a mandatory 25-year sentence. However, they did prosecute him for assault causing injury and his HIV status was used as evidence in his trial. The judge denied our motion to suppress the issue of HIV because he said that it went to the severity of my response to the situation. A jury found him guilty of assault, but instead of prison, the judge sentenced him to community service, a fine, and an anger management class. People need to know that this happened and that if it can happen to some privileged white guy like me, imagine how people who can't defend themselves deal with this issue.